Hello NBA fans, and welcome to the ninth episode of the NBA, the week that was. The previous week had some great games, including a career high for a once-in-a-generation player and some tight games that went down to the wire. Also, the All-Star starters were announced last week, and I wanted to tell you guys about what I thought regarding the selected starters. Overall, last week was a great week for me and all of the NBA fans around the world. Let's not skip a beat and get right into the newest installment of the NBA, the week that was. We start this episode off with a close game between two teams who have probably lost all playoff hope. The Timberwolves beat the Suns 116-114. Even though Carl Anthony Towns had 32 points and 12 rebounds, Derrick Rose's 31 points and a game winner off the bench made him the star player of the game. We saw another flash of 2011 MVP Rose when he hit an off-balance 20-foot jump shot right in the face of his defender. Whenever I see Rose succeed this year, it makes me so happy. The adversity this man has overcome and faced is ridiculous. He was picked first by the Chicago Bulls in the 2008 draft, and in 2011, he became the youngest MVP of all time. Then, the worst happened. He tore his ACL twice, and due to his lack of athleticism and the inability to come back to his MVP form, he was traded to the New York Knicks. He played two mediocre seasons there, which prompted a free agent signing in Cleveland on the veterans' minimum. He wasn't able to fit in the Cleveland system either, which got him traded to the Utah Jazz, who immediately cut him. He was a free agent for the longest time until he was signed by the Timberwolves. Now he is here notching his career high this season, as well as hitting multiple game winners. What a journey, and what a player. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the Oklahoma City Thunder defeated the New York Knicks 127-109. Unfortunately for the Knicks fans currently tuning in, this won't be the only defeat of the Knicks that we talk about. And it really doesn't matter. I bet you're used to losing anyways. Paul George continues to make his case as a top 5 player this season by adding on 31 points with 4 rebounds and 4 assists. The Knicks' only spark was undrafted rookie Alonzo Trier, who had 16 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds off the bench. Anyways, PG-13 has been balling out this year. He's averaging a career high in 27 points, 8 rebounds, and he leads the league with 2.3 steals a night. If Kawhi Leonard wasn't in the league... I would make a strong case for Paul George to be the best two-way player in the league. The struggling Dallas Mavericks got the better of the falling Los Angeles Clippers 106-98. Disregarding the Mavs win, we finally saw a human form of rookie Luka Doncic. He had 17 points on 5 of 15 shooting and 0 of 8 from 3. It pains me as a Hawks fan to see the star that we traded away. I'm not saying that I don't like Trey Young, I'm his number one fan. But the fact that we traded such an outstanding player really hurts me. I remember that three or four episodes ago, I was saying that the Clippers won't sustain their first position and drop down to 7th or 8th. Well, I guess I was right. The Clippers currently sit in 8th place of the Western Conference with 27 wins and 22 losses. I knew that their team play would, with above average players couldn't get them too far against a team with 5 all-stars and some of the best players of all time. Unbelievable. Just crazy. Mind-blowing. I am running out of words to describe Mr. MVP James Harden. He casually shows up to Madison Square Garden and drops a career and franchise high 61 points on 22 foul shots made. Did I also say that he had 15 rebounds and 5 steals? Is there anything he can't do? The Rockets did also get the win 114-110. to I love watching this guy play day in and day out. His dribbling is unstoppable, but what really separates him is his ability to draw fouls. Yeah, the haters will say he flops, but to get 26 free throws is just crazy. What annoys me the most is that people still think he shouldn't be MVP. A person who has averaged 49.9 points across the last 6 games and is averaging 36 points, 7 rebounds, 8 assists, and 2 steals should not win MVP. I don't know what is going on in the haters' minds, But I really do think they need to watch the NBA and understand that Harden is winning his second MVP this year. On Thursday, we saw another Thunder win. This time, they defeated the Pelicans 122-116. However, this time, they won on the back of Russell Westbrook. He had a monster triple-double with 23 points, 17 rebounds, and 16 assists. His performance fueled the Thunder win over a Pelicans team without their star, Anthony Davis. 
In his absence, Drew Holiday did step up with 22 points, 12 assists, 9 rebounds, and 4 steals. With the Thunder currently being a playoff team, let me update you guys about my predictions for the Western Conference playoffs. I have the Warriors in 1st, the Thunder in 2nd, the Nuggets in 3rd, the Rockets in 4th, the Lakers in 5th, the Blazers in 6th, the Jazz in 7th, and the Spurs in 8th. Why don't we go through another Harden show on national TV? He had an off game with 35 points and 7 assists against the Raptors. Despite him scoring less than 40 points, the Rockets still beat the Raptors 121-119. to Harden locked down the red-hot red hot Kawhi Leonard on the last possession and forced him to airball the potential game-winning three. Another Rockets game gives me another opportunity to talk about James Harden. He has scored 30 or more points for the last 22 games. Only the legend Will Chamberlain has had a longer streak. Honestly, I think even if he falls off and averages around 20 points for the last few games of the season, he'll still win MVP. He's just too good. Our last game before we talk about the All-Star game was between the Boston Celtics and the Golden State Warriors. It was a great game, but the All-Star heavy Warriors won 115-111. to Kevin Durant led all scorers with 33 points and 9 boards, but despite the loss, Kyrie Irving had the best performance with 32 points, 10 assists, and 6 rebounds. It was a close game throughout, but some rebounding mistakes in the end cost the Celtics their coveted win. I still believe there could be a Celtics against Warriors finals matchup. If the Celtics figure out a way to utilize all their talent in the best way possible, Kyrie Irving's clutch mentality in big situations could lead the Celtics all the way to a finals matchup that many NBA fans want. Okay, now that the games are over, let's talk All-Stars. On Thursday night, the NBA announced the starters for the All-Star game in Charlotte. These players will be the players that will be selected first by the captains of the two teams and will be starting. From the Western Conference, James Harden and Stephen Curry were selected as a backcourt duo. I don't have too much to say about these two being selected as starters, except that they deserved it. They're both MVP candidates this year. In the front court, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Paul George were chosen. I do have some concerns with these selections. LeBron James got captain as a lead vote-getter, so I have no doubts about that. He's the greatest player of all time. But I believe Anthony Davis should have gotten either Paul George or Durant's spot. Davis has been playing really well this year by averaging 30 points, 12, 13 rebounds, 2 steals, and 2 blocks a night. He is a strong Defensive Player of the Year candidate and should have been a starter this year. On the east side, Giannis Antetokounmpo was named captain as the leading vote-getter. With him in the front court was Kawhi Leonard and Joel Embiid. I also agree with these selections. They're also MVP candidates, so they deserve to start. In the backcourt, we have Kyrie Irving and Kemba Walker. I believe, overall, the fans, players, and media chose the correct players to start from the East. They've all been playing in a way which leads their teams, so they deserve to start. I will discuss the All-Star Draft and the team selected in an episode after the All-Star Draft. That wraps up the latest episode of this series. I hope you stuck around in this extended edition and enjoyed it. Well, I have no other messages for you guys. So let's hope that next week's games were as good as this week's. Anyways, thanks for watching this episode of the NBA, the week that was. See ya!